How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Boilai Hobby Time. A little over two weeks ago, I was in Korea with my wife, and I dragged her around to some local hobby stores. I was looking for kits that I couldn't find in the U.S., and these fit the bill. I bought a couple boxes, threw them in my suitcase, flew back to Colorado, and today, I'm going to try and make something fun with them. The first thing to do is to get the kits out of their oversized DVD boxes and begin assembly. This was my first time buying model kits while traveling, and the unique packaging made it nice and easy to fit into a suitcase, which was a huge plus because I didn't bring any extra luggage, which actually was a really good thing in the end because otherwise I would have been tempted to buy everything I saw. Snapping the pieces out of the trays was very satisfying, and everything went together with very little effort. I did end up using my own super glue instead of the provided glue because I'm impatient. I'm sure their glue holds the pieces together just fine, but it took a very long time to dry, and I didn't feel like holding all the pieces together while it did. In my experience, if there's one thing you can eliminate to have a more peaceful hobby time, it's the need to hold things together while they dry. While I was in Korea, I saw a lot of awesome model kits, but most of them were from Japan. So I limited myself to kits that were exclusive to Korea so that I could build something inspired by my time there. If I do ever go to Japan though, I will be sure to bring a much bigger suitcase. The buildings come with some fun textured rubber mats with some templates to cut out the shape of each roof section. It's kind of a fun feature that I've never seen before, and I really like it. After the larger building was all together, I moved over to the smaller one, which instead of a house, was a traditional Korean pavilion. This one is modeled after a specific pavilion located at the Buso Sansong Fortress, but I'm going to be repurposing it for this build. This pavilion had six identical triangle rubber roof tiles that I cut out with the included template, and I glued each of those triangles in place and that was the second building done. While at the hobby stores in Korea, I searched for a good traditional Korean monster to pair with these buildings, and I couldn't find anything quite right. In the end, I decided to go with this dragon from Dungeons and Lasers that I found at my local hobby store back home. I have to say, it's a very well-sculpted and beautiful little miniature, and it fit many of the characteristics of a traditional dragon that you'd find depicted in Korea and other parts of Asia. It came with some options for wings, but I left those off to keep it more authentic. Once the dragon was assembled, it was time to figure out the layout for the diorama itself. I wasn't completely sure about the layout originally, but I knew I wanted part of a lake and a nice little hillside for one of the structures to sit on. To build up the landscape, I used this pink foam. I cut out the base layers that will make up the foundation of the base as well as the rest of the layers which will make up the hillside. It was then just a matter of gluing each of the layers together with some hot glue and then carving away everything with a hot wire and a nice sharp utility knife. Because I didn't plan the terrain ahead, I had to go back and peel off some unnecessary layers that I had glued together. But that's just part of the fun of winging it, I guess. I cut out a little block from the top section of terrain and I carved some steps into it using my utility knife. These stairs definitely don't meet any standard of safety, but then again, neither do dragons. But it's okay as long as they look cool. I wanted some large rounded rocks to frame the house and create something of a backdrop for the rest of the diorama. I used a fake rock made from plaster to give the fake rocks made from foam more of the appearance of a real rock, which is kind of funny if you think about it. I glued the rest of the loose foam pieces together and then I added a little ledge for our serpentine friend to perch on. At this point, I had made quite a mess out of the foam, so I started cleaning it. And I began cleaning by hand, but that was taking too long, so I used a shortcut. To protect my dirty but not so dirty hobby mat, I put down a dirty hobby mat, and then I threw in some gloves, because terrain paste is messy, and then I broke out the sculpt mold. I mixed up a cup and began to smear. I made sure to use multiple batches of the stuff, because it sets way too quickly to have covered the whole thing in one shot. 
The Sculptor Mold does a great job of creating an earth or rock-like texture and blending elements of the terrain together. I glued the structures in place at this point because I did want to blend their bases in with the Sculptor Mold as well. I was careful not to get the Sculptor Mold on the buildings as I blended them into the rest of the terrain. To protect the rest of the exposed foam, it was really hard to open, okay? I used a mix of black paint and Mod Podge. And once all of the foam had been painted black, I set the base aside to dry, and I took the dragon outside and primed it, and it was time to begin painting that. I decided to go with the color scheme for this dragon that I saw on the box. Unlike many of the dangerous fire-breathing dragons depicted in European mythology, Korean dragons are mostly nice and live in bodies of water, like rivers, lakes, and in the sea. I learned that from Wikipedia. Because of that, I felt like the blue-green combo was just right for this diorama. This dragon, although very nice, does appear to be kind of angry right now. So we'll have to figure out what that's all about. 24 hours had passed and the terrain paste was all dry, so I took it outside and I primed it black. I used a hairdryer to accelerate the dry time of the spray paint. I realized I had forgotten to add the trees that I wanted, so I took this nice gnarled tree, which was a little too big, and I broke it into some smaller pieces. And then I began gluing them to the scene. After that, I began my painting. It would have been easier to add detail to the structures had I painted them separately and then glued them in place, but I feel like I had more success creating a unified look by painting it this way. I created a gradient at the bottom where the water will be and I painted the buildings in their traditional colors. While we were in Korea this time, we stayed at the Hanuk village in Jeonju and stayed in a house very similar to the one on the top of this hill. After some dry brushing, it was time to add some dead plant life, which is an oxymoron, but you understand what I'm saying. I threw on some Woodland Scenics blended turf, which has the nice appearance of dried leaves or brown grass, I sealed it with isopropyl alcohol and watered down white glue. Next, I added some living plant life, which is redundant, and I added it in the form of bright green lichen to all of the gnarled little trees. The trees were the last of the dry land terrain to do, and then after the scenic glue had dried, it was time to move on to the water. I used some silicone sealer and acrylic sheets to make a dam to hold back the resin and create a cross section of the lake. In the past, I've used hot glue or tape to hold the acrylic together, but the silicone has by far given me the best results when it comes to preventing leaks. After all three of the sheets were in place, I used some tape to hold them together while the silicone cured. This took 24 hours. In the meantime, I drilled a little hole in the bottom of the dragon to anchor a brass rod, which will keep the dragon in place while the resin cures. I glued it into its little perch with some foam safe super glue, and then I set it aside and waited for 24 hours before pouring the resin. In case you haven't seen any of my previous videos involving resin, it's not a very easy thing to get right, especially when you're impatient like me. This time round, I am using a slow curing deep pour resin, and I'm pouring it in two layers, which comes with its own challenges, but minimizes the risk of overheating, which is arguably the easiest way to ruin a resin pour. To make sure that both of the layers were exactly the same, I used the same amount of resin for each one, and I mixed in the same amount of pigment as well. After it had been thoroughly mixed, I poured it into the box. The stick helps prevent large bubbles from forming and mixing to the bottom of the resin after it's been poured from this distance. There will always be some bubbles that form and float to the top, which you can pop with a butane torch. After the first layer had cured enough to be past the point of overheating, I mixed up the second batch, just like I said, exactly like the first, and I added that. I popped the bubbles and then I left it to cure for about four days. While I waited for the resin to cure, I painted up this little woman in the traditional Korean garment called a hanbok. 
I decided to add her to the diorama to be having a conversation with the dragon. And while I paint her, I'd like to give a huge thank you and shout out to all of my patrons. Thanks again to all of my patrons, you guys are the best. After the second layer of resin had fully cured, it was time to remove the acrylic sheets and wrap up this project. I cleaned up the messy sides of the diorama with some styrene sheets that I had spray painted black. I also added some ripples to the surface of the water using water effects from Woodland Scenics. I added the last few details including the little lady, as well as some white water around the dragon, and after that, I called it good. That is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Have a great week, everyone. I'll see you next time.